Revelation 9, if you turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5, verse number 8. When you found that, if you would turn then over to Romans chapter number 12. Romans 12, verse number 9. Romans 5, 8, and then Romans 12, verse number 9. Romans 5, 8, a very familiar passage of Scripture. The Bible says, But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 12, 9, the Word of God says, Let love be without dissimulation. Real, not fame, not with hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. For a few moments tonight, I want to look at the love of God and the character of love tonight. What is the character of love? What is the love of God? Amen. The book of Romans uh, talks about love. And uh, many folks talk about the love of God. But I don't know how much they know about the love of God. You, lots of people will tell you that they love God and that God loves them, but that's about the extent of what they know about love. And so our text tonight, amen, is one that's going to help us understand the love of God, Brother Daniel, even better And what is the characteristics of love. So I want to look at a, a few things that we find here in Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let's talk about the love of God for a few moments. I think there's three things that I want to look at this evening that I believe that, that the Scripture gives us. And, and the first thing that the Scripture gives us is that there is proof that, uh, of the love of God. Amen. Proof of God's love. Uh, you may say, why well, do we need to know that? I'll answer that question in just a few moments. But the Bible says that God commended His love toward us. What does that mean, that word commendeth? It means to prove or to demonstrate. Uh, as some of you gentlemen may, may, maybe you know what that's like. Maybe your, 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 your uh, wife asks you, well, how much do you love me? And you prove that love to her or vice versa. Proving your love. Amen. And God has proven His love to us tonight. Amen. There is proof of the love of God. Amen. He demonstrated it. He proved it. The Word of God but says, But God commended or God proved His love toward us. The very first thing that I see is the place of the proof. And that's a, that's a place where Christ died for us. The Bible says that God loved us so much that Christ died for us. There is a place called Calvary that is a demonstration of the love and the proof of God for us. Thank God for the proof of His love. Amen. Calvary gives it. And God doesn't have to do one other thing to prove His love for us. He's already done it. We quote him all the time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall never believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at the beginning of that verse. But God so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's talk about this for a minute. God doesn't have to do one other thing to prove his love for us. He already demonstrated it. He already gave us proof of it. Amen. That he loves us. How? That He gave His Son, His only begotten Son, for us. He loves us. And Amen. Calvary is the greatest demonstration 
of love that God can ever show toward us. So what about this then? When people view times of disaster or tragedy, things don't go their way, you know what they say? God must not love us. I want to say something tonight. I don't mean this harsh, but that's pathetic. That's pathetic that you think because there is a disaster that God doesn't love you. The authority of His Word has already displayed and given us proof that God loves us. There's no more proof that is needed than Him sending His only begotten Son and Him dying on Calvary. God loves us tonight. Amen. Uh, as, you know, uh, uh, such comments, amen, ignore the divine fact that God loves people and they choose to ignore that sin has consequences. Tragedies, unfortunate things, uh, oftentimes are, are the root of sin. And so people seem to, to, to want to talk about the love of God and ignore the fact of sin. And, and, and then they begin to uh, blame uh, those things of sin on uh, a lack of God's love. God loves us tonight. Unconditionally. And if there was ever proof, there was Calvary. And you hear the writer of Hebrews, he gives affirmation, but God demonstrated, God proved, God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. How many of you have ever seen, you know, there's, there's that place of proof, but there's also that perverting of proof uh, 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 where, where folks, uh, you know, they'll begin to bargain with God. Well, if, if He really loves me, He'll do it by doing such and such. Maybe you're guilty of that. And if God really loved me, He would do this. Listen, God's not in the bargaining business. God already gave demonstration of His love. No bargaining required. It's yours. It's mine. It was evidenced. It was proofed. As He commended His love toward us in that we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Listen, if, if, if Christ dying for us doesn't prove God's love for us, then nothing else will. Nothing else will. But God, if you provide this for me, or if God, you give me that, or if God, you heal my body, then listen, God doesn't need to do any of those things. He's already sent His only begotten Son. He loves you tonight. He loves me tonight. He loves the world tonight. In that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. So the proof of God's love, but the purity of God's love, Listen how pure God's love is in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. A lot of things Amen. go under the heading of love that is not love. But you talk about a God who loves. He didn't love our immorality. He didn't love the place that we were in. But He loved us in spite of it. It's a pure kind of love tonight. It wasn't seeking anything but a restored relationship. It required nothing of us because everything that we have is given from God already. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Amen. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We live in a world where, where people live by not love, but they live by lust. And all of a sudden, in the middle of lust, they call it love. And, and so people get this twisted idea that, 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 that love is immorality, but the love of God is as moral and as clean and as beautiful as it comes. God's love, amen, it will purify us. Amen. It will change us. He died on the cross because 
He wanted to get rid of immorality. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God wanted to make a real pure way and have a relationship with us that's clean. Talk about love tonight that's pure, that's untainted. God loves us. Amen. Amen. He proved it on Calvary. There's purity that comes in His love. Amen. The only way you and I can ever experience purity in our life is by diving into the crimson, crimson stream. Amen. And having our sins washed away because of the love of God. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure. Hallelujah. God's love is pure. It washes away our sins. It washes away the guilt of sin. It washes away the consequences of sin. Amen. God loves us tonight. It is love. It's pure. And because of that, we should rejoice in purity. We'll talk more about that in just a few moments when we talk about the character of God's love. But the Bible says that love rejoices not in iniquity. God doesn't love when people get into sin. We shouldn't love when people get into sin. God doesn't love immorality, and we shouldn't love immorality. God's love is pure, and He wants us to love pure. So we've seen the proof of God's love, the purity of God's love, but the people of God's love I want you to imagine this tonight. The Word of God says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Some folks think, and listen, listen to me through, listen to me through. Some folks think that because they're a sinner, they can't experience the love of God. God loves sinners. But the manifestation of God's love really can't be given until a sin repents. So some folks may say, how can God love me? You can't understand that our minds are jaded by this world and by immorality. So for us to understand it in the fleshly uh, uh, nature in which we live, it's an impossibility. But when we accept the finished work of Christ upon the cross, Amen. And we say, God, you said you loved me. So I'm, I, 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 I'm grabbing onto it tonight. And, and I'm believing that you love me. I'm repenting of my sins. And all of a sudden, the windows of heaven open up. And there's a manifestation of God's love. Amen. Even though we're sinners, it does not keep God's love from us. Hearing that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Our prayers are hindered because of sin. Uh, they keep us from God. Amen. But when we do that, that prayer of repentance, it gives us the manifestation of God's love toward us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God loves us and He wants us to experience the gift of His love. Amen. If we refuse the gift of God's love, amen, we will never benefit from the great love of God. God help us. God to always embrace the love of God. So proof of God's love. He doesn't need to do anything else. You don't need to bargain with us. You don't need to say, God, well, if you love me, Amen. Get to the Word of God. Get to Calvary. And know that He loves you. Know that His love is pure. His, His love tonight is pure. Amen. He causes immorality to be washed away to morality. He changes our desires and our motives and our loves. And it's for us, Lord. For all of us. Now tonight, I know that you, you may say, well, Brother Seville, I, I know all about that. But this is the part, and I think Sister Holly this week, as she was practicing the song for this morning, and I have her come back tonight and do that same song. But I got the wheels and my mind turning about the love of God. 
So we know about God's love, but let's look at the character of love. Romans 12, 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And so the character of love is described here in Scripture. And it's really hardly the character that you'll ever hear in the world when you hear about love. The world loves to talk about love. Man, look at someone's t-shirt. If you went long enough to Walmart, you'd probably see a few people that, that had love on their t-shirt. You ask them about love, they couldn't tell you about the real character of love. But when we get in the Word of God, God's Word tells us what real love is. The Word of God says that it's without dissimulation. You know what that word dissimulation means? It means without hypocrisy. It, it, without any type of hypocrisy, you love God, which means this. It means that you abhor or you hate, you detest that which is evil, and you cleave to that which is good. So real love will do this. It will hate evil. When you hear something evil, and you hate it. Uh, when you see something evil, you hate it. When you see something contrary to the holiness of God, uh, you, you, you dislike it. But when you see the goodness of God, you've got to cleave to it. It's what you grab to. So if you really say you love God, there's some requirements. If you say you love God, you have to do it without dissimulation or without hypocrisy, which means you need to love the way that God wants us to love. So let's look at that quickly in the next few moments. Once again, that word, uh, uh, dissimulation, meaning being uh, full of hypocrisy, uh, abhor evil, and clinging to that which is good. So let's look at that. The, the abhorring of evil. Abhor means this. It means to hate something. Uh, uh, abhor is a very strong word. And it indicates a very strong attitude. It's not speaking about tolerance. It's talking about hating something that is evil. And so uh, you can't erroneously love one thing. Uh, and say that you hate it too. It's impossible to do. Well, well if, if, if you said, Brother, uh, Brother Joseph, I said, Man, I love chocolate cake or peanut butter ice cream. But I hate it too. You say, like, Buster, you're, you're crazy. How can you love it but yet hate it? Well, how do Christians say they love God? But tolerate evil. All of us. God doesn't want us to be in hypocrisy in our lives. And so, if you truly love something, and if you love God, you'll love truth and you'll hate falsehood. When people start preaching a different gospel, when there's something about the Christian that rises up and says, I hate that. You don't hate that person, but you hate the evil that is being taught and the evil that is being spread. See, God wants us to love virtue. And when we love virtue, we'll hate immorality. And God wants us to, to, to love that which is right and to hate that which is wrong. Some people sometimes they, they misunderstand pastors and, and I'll go to a pastor's defense very quickly because, because I think, you know, I, I probably know the heart of a pastor. And some folks will say, well, he preached awful hard. He says he loves, but how can he preach like that? Because he loves you and he hates evil and he hates sin and he knows that God hates it. So he wants to tell you the truth. So there's not a teeter-totter between evil and good. Amen. The Word of God says uh, that, that, that let love be without dissimulation. Hate evil and cleave to that which is good. Amen. We're living in an hour where a lot of folks are wanting to force us to tolerate evil. God still abhors evil. I'm not talking about people tonight. I love people. But I dislike and I abhor their sins. I've been mistaken. Folks have said, boy, you're really tough. You're really rough. Well, my nature really isn't like that. And so, 
I think that we have to look at God's Word. Well, that's how you interpret God's Word. Excuse me, but have you looked at God's Word and have you studied it? Or has that become already a predetermined decision in your mind without ever searching the pages of God's Word? Well, I think God is, show me by Scripture. Show me who God is by Scripture. Because otherwise, Brother Doug, I don't know Him. So if God abhors us evil, then I stand with God. And evil is wrong. Even in a world that's so upside down, the very first thing that I notice of the two things about the character of love is that God hates evil. Satan is so involved in our society and he's creeping his way into our churches that we think that we need to gray out areas of the Word of God. That we need to become tolerant of that which is evil. True love for God will not tolerate evil. And the second thing that I notice is the affection for good. The Bible says, abhor that which is evil, but he goes on down to say, cleave to that which is good. Amen. Cleave means this, it means to be glued to something. You ever see something glued together? When you glue it together, you purposefully glue it together that it will stick together. And so we are to be to good because we love it as glue sticks to something. We cleave to it. Amen. It means that we are faithful to God in our fellowship. So we're faithful to God in our service. We're faithful to God in our lifestyle. We're faithful to God in our decisions. I'm faithful to God. I'm glued to Him. We are one, and so I cleave myself to that which is good. Now, you may think this is crazy. Uh, the, the other day, I, 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 I called my wife, and, and we needed to get some things at Walmart. I said, well, how about you meet me after work at Walmart? And uh, we'll go. Um, she said, well, do you, do you want me to go? I'm like, I want you to go with me because... I don't want to go by myself. That's time that we can spend together. And so if you meet me, and, and, and so we've joked about that. I said, the reason I got married is to spend time with you. I don't want to go do things by myself. That's just the way I am. Uh, there are some things that I have to do by myself, but most of my leisure days, I like to spend with my wife. I married her for a reason. I love her. I like to cling to her. I, I enjoy it. I believe, and even in that it can be jaded, but I believe that that's what God wants from us. He wants us to cleave to Him because we love Him. Amen. Listen, I enjoy every moment I'm with my wife, whether we're working or whether we're having fun or whether we're chasing children around. Amen. Whatever it is, Sister Stacy, I enjoy it. God says, He says, let love be without hypocrisy. If you love me, cleave to that which is good. True love is low love. Listen, I, I struggle tonight. I'm, I'm being transparent. I struggle with folks. I don't know the Bible. I don't have a love for the Word of God. I struggle when folks tell me that they love God, but they're never in church. I struggle with that. Because I believe something is to be said about our love for God. We will adhere to that, which is God. That's a challenge to all of us. Let our love be without dissimulation. And I believe that where there is a holy love for God, there will be a holy life that comes from God. 
Amen. And if we love God, our absolute loyalty will be to God and that which is good. Tonight, I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us. Can we just fall in love with Jesus once again? That's all I want us to do. I appreciated this morning. Some folks left here and they said, I, I love this church because when I'm here, I feel love. I want folks to feel love. But, Brother Doug, if our love is only given horizontally and we never give it vertically to God, then we fail. Because we can only really love God and love people and love truth as we fall in love with Him all over again. So try if you come to the piano. Let me share a little story about myself with you. When I was in kindergarten, we had a rug and some chairs that you got to sit on if you weren't good. And I was a pretty good kid for the most part because I was pretty much intimidated by teachers and authority. So I tried to try to do good. But me and my buddy who went to church together, Brother George, we loved, we loved church and we loved Sunday school. We loved children's church. We loved God. And so, Sister Tina, we just kept singing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, we sang it over and over again, even when our teacher told us to be quiet. And so we had to go sit. That's one of the only times I remember being punished in school. We had to go sit in the chair because Brother Justin kept saying, but I don't want to sing it. I want it to be the song that exemplifies my life. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. You know why? Because number one, he's already proved his love for me on Calvary while that I was yet a sinner. And he said, if you fall in love with me, then the requirement is this, that you do not live in hypocrisy. But if you really love me, I'll pour evil and cling to that which is good. So tonight, could we say, God, because you love me first, the characteristics of my love will be without the simulation. I will love you by pouring that which is evil. In clinging to light blue, I will stick to that which is good. Amen. So tonight, let's gather in. Amen. Sister Holly sings this. You can sing along as you pray and make it your prayer. Amen, God. I just want to fall in love with you all over again. That my love may honor you. Let's gather in tonight.